So then we had the Atlanta street fight with Cody Rhodes and Andrade El Idolo. And there's a lot that happened here. First off, Arn Anderson fell off the stage. Looked like he almost killed himself. Oh, man, that was and, scary. And uh, Jose, just... who was supposed to attack him, actually, you see in the background, he, him he helps him out. And then <laughs> yeah. once he helps him out, he starts beating on him because that was yeah. the spot. So apparently Arn's all right, I hope. I mean, he was doing all the spots and everything like that. So Yeah, yeah, but... but... He's a pro. You know, like, like, let's say he was really hurt. He's still going to do those spots. Sure, but I mean, he was on his feet and he was moving around. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he I didn't mean, like I, break I, his leg or anything like that. No, 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 no. He wouldn't have broken his leg or broken his. I don't, and hopefully not broken his back or anything. I mean, I was told after the show that everyone's okay. Which, um, I mean, so I think that know, would can, be relative. <laughs> I, I think it's on a curve. I think it's. I think they're all like okay compared to Diego Sanchez, but I don't yes. know that they're all okay on like a normal human being term. But you know, seeing what Cody went through and everything like that. But yeah, Arn took a bad looking fall. I guess John Silver nearly fell in that in that in that corner too. And like they need to get rid of that corner. And and Danielson too. So the big spot. I mean, Cody was was uh, booed. He was also cheered at points, kind of dependent on what was going on. So, so what I was told from people who were there that it was, um, and this is fans that were in the building, not you know, is that, and and you could sort of tell. There's like one spot where where Cody's being booed really loud, and then you look at the audience and you see everyone, not everyone, but you see tons of people standing up cheering for him. And so it was, it was basically seventy percent pro, but the thirty percent. You know, Tony Schiavone even said that. And, like, sometimes when they say that, it's bullshit. And I, you know, but the thing is, if you have 30% booing, it's going to drown out 70% cheering, unless the 70% you're just going to, you know. I mean, it, it will. It will in, in every case. So, um, you know, he did have more cheers than boos. It was his hometown. But there were times where the, the booing was very noticeable. And then other times he was cheered. Um, but, but from what I was told, like... It was it was basically a seventy thirty split, but the noise came at different points. And like when people, you know, when he did stuff that the people wanted, were going to cheer him, cheered him. Then it sounded like he was being cheered. And then the same people, you know, like um, that booed. You know, other times could boo, could drown out the cheers when they got into booing him. Um, there was also it was interesting because it was in this match, but no other match. There were some you know cornet fans in the front row with their. Um, signs and the one thing was very noticeable because because you know aw you really don't have the people who you know whatever go and i mean like you definitely have those people but they're usually not in the front row of an aw show as far as people who were you know whatever trying to do their signs and you know whatever the people who chant like cm punk at a wwe show for example um but there were you know that was um it was really only two guys, but AEW does not confiscate signs because they were there and, uh, you know, nobody took their signs and nobody accosted them or anything. And, um, you know, um, there were a couple on Cody. But it was the same guys. They would have the, the anti Cody and the anti AEW and the Outlaw Mud show and, um, I forgot the other one, but they, you know, they were doing that. And I don't know if they were like one to, you know, well, they were Cornette fans, you know, so, but I don't know if they were, like, thinking that they were going to get, um, you know, confiscated because that's what would happen if it was a WWE show and that same, you know, you're sitting there. But, you know, I mean, they let them do it, and that's fine, and, and uh, you know, but um, it was it was, it was was interesting only because it was Atlanta, which is, you know, Cody's hometown, and but there's uh, he's going to be booed everywhere, and he's going to be, like, when they're in... Um, New, um, when they're in uh, next week is next week's UBS arena, so he'll get booed pretty heavily there. I do think it's interesting um, if MJF gets any cheers because he is a Long Island guy, and they are on Long Island. In fact, it's right near where he he, you know, uh, I don't think there's, I don't think it's that far from Plainview to Belmont. Um, so, you know, and usually. The big stars, if they're heels, go into a town. I mean, he'll, he'll, he was basically doing a promo, you know, I mean, it was sarcastic and everything, you know, where, you know, he's going to be the hometown hero and everything like that. But, uh, 
I'm sure whether they cheer him or boo him, it, it's pretty much immaterial, but it'll, it'll be interesting next week. I was kind of curious, like, how he would be taken. Well, this whole match was designed to get Cody over. The fans wanted tables, and so they saved it for the very end, and Cody got to get the table out. And he's they're fighting up on the top rope. He's going for this big superplex, and they're fighting and fighting. And all of a sudden, somebody comes out of the crowd, and they pull their hood off, and it's Brandy. And she definitely got booed. And she starts pouring this lighter fluid all over the table. And then she lights it on fire. And as soon as she lit it on fire, all of a sudden, the Rhodes were the biggest baby faces in all of Atlanta. And Cody and Andrade are rushing to get this reverse superplex in because they don't want the fire to go out. And uh, they do it. And Cody lands right on the table. And uh, from the beginning of the match, he had this, uh, this stuff all over his back. This uh, basically fire, fire retardant, whatever. And he, the announcers even pointed out, so I, I don't know if they didn't smarten up the announcers or what, but they sh- absolutely probably should not have called attention to it because once they did, you just couldn't stop looking at it. But that's what it was. And I guess it worked to a degree. But, I mean, Cody, he's on fire. He covers Andrade. There's this big, I mean, there's a fist-sized thing of fire on Andrade's chest during the cover. And Andrade's trying to wipe this off his chest as Cody's pinning him. It was And Andrade was also trying to wipe the fire off of Cody as yep. he was getting pinned. And uh, so he pins him, and then Cody celebrates. And the fans are going nuts, and he's he's practically crying because he's getting this baby face reaction. His back has got, like, there's burns on his back. I mean, this was madness. Yeah. Madness. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I know it's a dude's hometown. I know he wanted yeah, to get cheered. He wanted. He wanted. He wanted, he wanted to do something. Dude, to, he wanted to do something. What's to, next after fire? To top the uh, the uh, moon salt off of the cage that he did last the last time he was in Atlanta. Um, but yeah, this was uh, this was scary. You know, but I I'm respect not, the guy for for loving the fans enough to do something like this. But like, you can love the fans and not light yourself on fire. I love the fans as well, but I'm not lighting myself on fire doing this show. Yeah, never. I, yeah, I um, I just don't like using props that you can't control. And and I mean, you know, I'm sure that people were right there, and if something bad were to happen, they would have sprayed them and everything. Yeah, but it's you fire, know? dude. By the time something bad has happened, like already, you're badly burnt. No, I know. No, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not a fan of fire. I mean, it happens. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of those things because. I'm just, I, you know, I don't. I'm not really a big fan of broken glass. I know people do it constantly now, um, but I just don't like the stuff that that um, that you know when you're doing props that you can't control. You know, like the props don't always know how to work. Tables a table, you can get hurt doing a table for sure. You know, it can. You never know exactly how it's going to break, but um, I mean, I just, you know, Matt Tremont just. Dude, that guy was in the hospital thing. for a while. And he was in the hospital for a while. I know. It's like, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm not a fan of, of, of using fire to that extent as a prop. I don't even like it to any extent, honestly. Um, you know, like, you know, like any, any kind of stuff like that. I'm just, it's not my thing, but, you know, it, yeah, I mean, he was looking for, he was looking for something. He got it. He wanted a big moment. He wanted something memorable. Wanted something that people were going to talk about um, to get himself over as a baby face. Um, to a, you know, I mean, I, I, they're still going to boo him though. I, it's just, it's like the thing that that, and he knows it, and everyone knows it is is it's become the cool thing when you go to AEW to boo Cody. It's just the thing, and you know, I mean. If they turn him heel, they're going to cheer him for that same reason. So it's kind of a fucked situation. But, you know, oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah. The One of the guys, you know, turn Cody, please. Please turn Cody. It's like, you know, okay, whatever. Um, whatever they're going to do, I don't know. I mean, they. I'm sure they have, like, many different ideas in mind. Everyone's aware of it. And, you know, it's just one of those things. You can be like Cena did with Vince and just go, like, look. You know, it's it's like, yeah, everyone boos him, and it sounds bad on TV and pay-per-view, but we go to the house shows, and everyone cheers him. And the fact is he's selling so much merch, so we don't want to fuck with the merch sales, and he's doing all the charity stuff, which Cody is doing the same thing. You know, it's like, you do, do you really want to 
you know, do all the charity stuff and then play heel on television. I mean, you can do it, but it's it's kind of, in some ways, it's kind of stupid, you know, in the traditional babyface heel thing. So, but you were not, you know, obviously, times are, times have changed. You can do that. But then you're, you know, being like a fake heel. You're being a heel to be a heel, but you're, but everyone knows you're really a baby face. And that's just, okay, yes, I'm playing heel for you. I don't, you know, I mean, I'm not, you can do it. I mean, you can do anything, but, um, it's just like a, it's just, it's just what it is. He's, you know, he's going to get booed and, um, by, by a percentage of people and probably a lot more when they get out of Atlanta than he would be in Atlanta. That's for sure. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.